Hey guys, Wrench here. Just thought I'd make an update to the setup instructions for the carrier script uh, now that I've incorporated it for the super carrier and uh, the last video is fairly old, so I just thought I'd make a new one. Alright, so what we're gonna do, first off I'm gonna set some weather, maybe call it five knots at the ground. That automatically gives me uh, some other numbers. None of the rest of this really matters for our purposes here, but I'll go ahead and type some in. And just for fun, I'll give it a little bit of turbulence. Uh, I forget the math for like what that number actually means, but anyway, so we have some uh, weather. We see that the wind is going to one, two, three. Just how that happened. So anywhere, we're gonna plop down the carrier. And I'm not going to give it any other boats nearby. I'm going to point it kind of vaguely in the right direction, but not quite, so you can actually see it turn. We don't really need to do anything special for the carrier. I'll zoom in so we can see it. Uh, so we don't need to do anything special other than give it a name. And of course, we need to have it do tech and stuff. So I'm going to use 71 RSV, have it go to the Roosevelt. And we also need to assign. Uh, 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 also need to assign ICLS. I'll have it do channel 11, and assign that to the Roosevelt. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead back over to the script file itself. You don't need to worry about any of this other than this little bit of documentation at the top. You just want to copy this, paste it in a new uh, file. And this just helps you to set up the uh, script call you're going to have to make. So what I'm going to do is copy the name of the carrier over here where it says unit one. I'm going to put in quotes, paste that in. So then the LARC or landing and recovery cycle is the time from when they start accepting aircraft to when they start accepting aircraft the second time. So they have to turn around, um, go opposite the wind at flank speed, then it slows down turns around again and starts accepting aircraft and we want that to be 90 minutes which is a good general amount of time. Okay so we have TACAN ICLS so that's everything we have to do with the carrier itself. Uh, we can also have a landing and recovery tanker so let's go ahead and set that up. You scroll down grab the S3B tanker I'm going to name the group Texaco Group. That name doesn't matter for the script, but it's just nice to have. Then I'm going to name the unit Texaco, since I'm going to use that. Uh, we're going to set up its uh, attack in. My squadron uses 42 X ray for that particular aircraft. Then I'm going to take this name, copy it. Something a little bit special we have to do here where uh, the tankers have to be formatted as a table. Um, so if you only have one tanker, it's real easy. We're going to add in the curly brackets. And I know, depending on your screen resolution, this might be a little bit difficult to read, but I'm, I'll just talk you through it. So we've got the curly brackets that indicate a table. I forget what they're actually called. Inside that is quotes. Inside the quotes is the name of the unit. So not Texaco group, uh, but Texaco. So if we were to have like another one, say shell, we'd add a comma, quote, shell. Right, um, but we only have the one, so just that. Okay, so that's everything we need for the carrier script. Now uh, I'll go back here, delete that waypoint. I'll make it take off from ramp, late activation, and we have to add a waypoint. Doesn't really matter where it is. He just has to have one so that he'll listen to the script when it tries to tell him to do something else. Otherwise, they'll go directly into landing mode and ignore any further orders from the script. Okay, so now we got to set up the triggers. So we'll go to the triggers menu here, go new, mission start. I'm going to make it blue so that I know it's the carrier. I will name it carrier to make it even that much better. And just at a glance, I make it blue so that I can uh, see it at a glance that it's for the carrier. Okay, so we're going to go do script file. Uh, this does require mist. So I got to figure out where that is. 
Uh, any version of Mist that's reasonably recent will work. It's on GitHub, it's on the forums. You, know, you can get that easily enough. We'll create another do script file. This is where we load in the carrier script itself. All right, and then we add another one. We go to do script, do script, copy this, paste it in there. And then in order to show how uh, you can interact with it, I will add an aircraft for me. I'm actually going to change that to player, and we'll make that take off from ramp. And that is all that I have to do for the carrier script. All right, so let's go ahead and launch the mission. I won't bother to save it, and uh, we can see how it works. Okay, so here we are in the mission. I'll go ahead and uh, go to the F9 view of the carrier. We'll speed up time a little bit. I set that to player, not client, so unfortunately I can't go too fast. But here we go, we see that the carrier is in fact turning to PRC as I described and it's accelerating to the necessary speed which in this case 22 knots because the speed at the wind speed right at ground level is slightly different from what you input into the um, into the mission editor. Okay so I'll give you an idea some of the other commands we have available um, if we go to the communications menu, F10 other, carrier script, and then Roosevelt. Um, there's guys in my Discord channel talking. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, so uh, any other carriers, uh, you can do it for as many as you want, and it just shows the name from the mission editor. So in our case, Roosevelt, you know, could be whatever you put in. This gives us three options. We can get information, we can override, and then the tanker submenu. So get information, it just spits out all this stuff, it gives us the BRC, the uh, Charlie time, which is the amount of time we have left to land, the bearing and range from own ship, the GPS coordinates, and the, um, the location in bulls. Then it gives us the TACAN information and the ILS channel, ICLS channel. So that's everything there. Uh, toggle override does pretty much what it says on the tin. It just makes it, um, forces it to go on BRC regardless of what the lark is set to. So like if you're, um, if you go out do a mission with your guys and you come back at, you know, 95 minutes, you don't want to have to follow the carrier all the way back to where it started. So you can force it to, uh, continue to accept, uh, aircraft. And then if we go to tankers, and we can spawn Texaco, we can get information. So let's go ahead and spawn it. And of course my plane's gonna be in the way because I started this from the mission editor. But that doesn't really matter for our purposes here. Uh, and then we go to other, go back to carrier script, Roosevelt tankers, and we can get information for Texaco. And it gives you the same stuff. It tells you fuel state, his um, uh, attack and information, his bearing and range from you, his position in bulls, and GPS. So like I said, the carrier will go about its merry business for the next, I think it said 38 minutes, and then it'll turn around, head back, turn around again, and be ready to go for the next uh, recovery cycle. So that's pretty much it on the carrier script. Uh, we can see Texaco is slowly spooling up over there. Uh, other than that, everything else is pretty much unchanged from the last videos, and the carrier will just uh, keep on keep on keeping on doing its thing. Uh, so this doesn't do any LSO stuff or any Marshall stack stuff, just not really necessary at this stage for my squadron and for most people I assume. So um, hopefully you guys find that useful and I'll talk to you again later.